Hey there, my fellow designers and creators. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. A lot of you have been waiting for this video and all of you have been asking me, what are my thoughts on everything that was launched in Config 2024, Figma AI? There's a lot to talk about. Uh, there's a lot to cover actually. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, what I'm basically gonna do in the video is give you some overall context of Figma AI and what's happening. I'm not gonna be explaining how to use the feature or do a recap. There are tons of videos already on the internet that's basically explaining the same thing all over again and again about what an all AI can do. I'm gonna be giving context in a little bit of a different way. We're also gonna go look at five major impacts that this has on the future of the product design industry and what this means for junior designers and mid-level designers. Um, then I'm gonna be talking about what are the skills you need to start focusing on now that AI has come into the picture. And finally, um, I'm gonna talk about what could be the future of Figma AI. And I think this is something that's really important to watch. So if you don't wanna watch the full video, at least watch the last part of it. I'm gonna leave timestamps so that you can jump to this part if you are interested. And it's important to understand what the future looks like because if you can figure that out, then we will know what are the appropriate steps that we have to take. So this is how the video is gonna be split and uh, let's get started. Now, I'm so happy that people have already started talking about this on social media. Of course, all of this is at a very high level and I'm gonna dive into much more details things that people have not really spoken about on social media. This has a much bigger impact than this. Um, so I'm gonna get into all of that. Now I'm gonna start off the video with this comment that I got, which uh, where this person is basically saying, Figma AI is not that good. The kinds of designs it generates, I believe anyone who practices designs for a couple of weeks can make those AI designs. Now, there are two parts to this. I'm gonna talk about the first part. Now, of course, Figma AI is not that good. It's not even out of beta, it's the first version. and it's okay, right? And it's something that is a little better than what I expected. All the other AI, gen AI tools that we've seen out there, which can produce screens, they haven't really done a good job at all. Figma AI is pretty decent and the demo looks okay, right? And this part is true. But the second part, which is about the kind of designs it generates, I believe anyone who practices designs for a couple of weeks can make those AI designs. This is something that I fully don't agree with. There are people with a lot of years of experience and maybe not even a lot of years of experience, somebody who's been in the industry for one, one and a half year, who still designs really poor looking screens, who basically have no grasp of their fundamentals, who do not understand visual hierarchy, don't know how to use colors and typography, right? So I wouldn't say anybody who just practiced it for a couple of weeks, practicing UI design and constructing something really good cannot be done within a couple of weeks. There are people who have, even after being having one or two internships and you know working in the industry for a year, do not know how to produce good looking screens, right? So this is something that I completely disagree with but it's a very fair comment overall. Now when auto layout was introduced many years ago by Figma, it took a while for people to start adopting it. And before auto layout, nobody really cared about how screens were constructed. Nobody cared about UI design that much. And after auto layout was introduced, people started taking this seriously. It's something that every designer had to know because it was helpful in understanding how to construct a screen the right way because that's how engineers construct it in code as well, right? So auto layout brought in a lot of parity for engineers and designers and also helped us look at things like constraints, responsiveness, designing for Android versus iOS versus tablet and a lot of these things came into picture. And this is a message that I got from somebody on LinkedIn where this person basically sent me their assignment. And um, this person is asking me, what do you think about the motive of this assignment? Is it that the person knows the mastery of Figma or the layout, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that there are even take home assignments where people are testing these skills where people are, are are expected to use auto layout, should know how to use auto layout, right? And this only happened because Figma introduced auto layout as a feature. And it's because it was important for designers to understand how to construct screens the right way. Another example is component properties. When component properties got introduced, it became so easy for designers to build really good and efficient design systems, right? Instead of making a million components, you can just make few components or basically few variants for a single component and you could do a lot, right? And this is also in how engineers do it. And so now design systems are a big thing. Everybody is doing it. Everybody is learning it because Figma enabled us to create really good design systems. And then they announced variables. This made that gap between designing and development much more closer, right? 
And now everybody is expected to know how to use variables. It's something that you as a designer and you specifically as a UI designer need to know how. So what basically happened here is this snowball effect where over the past few years, this snowball has become bigger and bigger. If I have to say this in the form of a metaphor, you have to keep running or else you're going to be consumed by the snowball, right? And this snowball effect is only going to become much bigger with AI that's coming in. What I want to say is that the impact is a lot greater than you may think because nothing is going to change today, but the change is going to start today. When auto layout was introduced, when variables was introduced, when component properties were introduced, nothing changed that day, but the expectations from the industry started to change. The situation is already bad for a lot of junior designers, given the market and given how many people are there and the demand and a lot of things. So whether AI exists or not, the situation is already bad. So AI can only make things worse. And when I say junior designers, I'm actually talking about people who have around less than three years of experience, right? Just because somebody has a title called senior product designer does not really make them a senior product designer. If you were to take the industry as a whole, anybody with less than three years of experience is still considered a junior designer, irrespective of what your title calls you. Now, I want to explain something in the form of a graph. If we take a bunch of random people, right, just handpicked random people and you evaluate them based on their UI design skills, right? This is sort of how the chart would look like. And as you can see, you've got quite a few highs. You've got around 10 people who seem to be pretty good at UI design. A lot of them are still learning. And then you've got a few of them who are, you know, probably not that great, right? And of course, this is not from any report or any analysis or any survey that I've done. This is based on my understanding and I've seen how the industry has grown over the many years. Now, if I take UI design and change that skill set to UX design, we see it drastically falls. You can see that the level of proficiency of each of these people is a lot less in UX design because they still don't understand basic interaction patterns, what makes a good user flow, what a good user experience looks like, what's the difference between a good and a bad user experience. People are still figuring this out. And I'm talking about these junior designers with less than three years of experience. And if you take critical thinking and problem solving, it falls even low. People don't understand metrics. People don't know how to think. People don't have a proper thought process, right? There's probably one person who's really good at it from this random lot, right? So you can see that most of these people who are designers lack UX design and critical thinking and problem solving skills. And to reiterate my point, I'm going to share, I'm going to show you this message that I got where this person shared one of their assignments that they got from a company that they were interviewing with. And this person is saying, I'm just feeling a bit overwhelmed and overthinking a lot about the problem statement because the last four assignments I submitted, I didn't get through and I didn't get clear feedback from them. So I'm just like, I don't want to get this thing wrong, right? So this person has submitted four assignment and he's come to me with this fifth assignment for feedback on it. And he hasn't able to take this forward. And this is another proof to show you that it's getting really hard for junior designers out there. So let's come back to this slide where I'm talking about UI design, right? Now this is UI design as a whole, but UI design with Figma AI is going to make the chart look like this. And what does this actually mean? What is happening over here? I want to explain this with this illustration, right? Now, for those of you who game a lot, play PUBG, Fortnite, and a lot of these games, you probably know what this is. This is basically what we call as a loot crate that suddenly drops in the middle of the game. And what this basically does, it has some guns, it has some power-ups. It's got a couple of things that gives you a competitive advantage over other players, right? What it's basically doing, it's leveling the playing field so that everybody has an equal chance of having a fair fight. And AI just level the playing field with Figma AI. And what this means is that the industry's focus is going to change. And I'm going to talk about what that means in this video. And you as a designer, you need to make sure you make the best use of this opportunity because the playing field has been leveled for everybody. So with that being said, I'm going to start off with the first of the five impacts. Now, the first one is about design agencies and service based companies and specifically for designers who are working there. Agencies will now need less designers. And why is this? Let me explain. Here's another message that I got. And this is about specifically about a design agency. And I have a specific video about identifying design driven companies coming soon. But this is a message that I got. And let me read this out, right? The design studio I work at, people, including the higher management, are aware of the impact design can bring. But they only end up onboarding clients or companies who think design is only about aesthetics 
and make the designers work on very tight, unrealistic deadlines, which ends up with the average designed product, right? Most of the clients that the company onboards it either half develops the product or doesn't develop at all. And this is because of failed design and development feasibility. We are aware but helpless due to designing in isolation and lack of interaction with the development team. Also, designers here aren't aware about scalability while designing any product. Management is also not bothered to teach this to the designers. Luckily, I came across the channel. I learned a lot of these things, which most designers in our company are not even aware of. And another funny thing is designers here think building components and style guide is equal to a design system. So this message clearly summarizes a lot of things. It summarizes a lot of problems over here. And Figma AI is very much capable of generating designs that a designer in such a design agency is able to generate, right? And as you can see, Clients only think about aesthetics and they only want things to be done within tight deadlines, right? So what this basically means is that design agencies can save costs and they can accept more projects if they have less designers who use AI. And most of these companies have two types of people. You've got UI designers and you've got UX designers. And I, this is something that is very different from how product-based companies work. In product-based companies, you have complete product designers who do everything end-to-end, -end, but in agencies, for, su for some weird reason, they have separate UX and separate UI, which absolutely makes no sense to me. But anyway, this is how they work. Now, what's going to happen here is that AI is going to make it for these UX designers who don't really design screens to start doing UI designs, right? AI is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for these UX designers and these UX designers can do the UX part and also the UI part as well. And this is one of the features that was released, right? Suggest auto layout. And this is done purely with AI. Auto layout is something a lot of people struggle with, right? So these UX designers can now construct screens in any way they want, do suggest auto layout, and they're sort of done. And UI designers are going to be forced to become thousand times better than AI because AI is going to get better. We have seen images become better. We have seen music, we have seen videos. All of this has grown over a period of time and it's doing a really, really good job. And of course, Figma AI is also going to start getting better. And the main reason that this affects design agencies so much is because of the fact that I spoke about, clients often have a very low benchmark as they don't really understand design. So you can deliver something that is half thought through, that doesn't have attention to detail, that sort of just gets the job done, that has subpar flows, right? And if you want to give something in a very tight deadline, you cannot, you will have to compromise on quality. And AI is going to enable somebody to create and generate a lot of screens and create flows a lot faster, right? So unless you're 1000 times better than Figma AI, you're going to be in deep trouble. And the question you need to ask yourself is, is your job to impress the clients and deliver based on deadlines, right? If you are a designer in an agency or a service-based company, this is the question you have to ask yourself. And if the answer is yes, then you really need to rethink your future career choices, right? You either start need to upskilling really quickly, or you need to get into a product-based company. And you got to do this change fast. You've got another six months, max one year before Config 2025, and God knows Figma what they're going to announce next year. And I have a few ideas of what they might do with AI, and I'm gonna show that in the last part of the video as I mentioned before, so make sure you watch that. I'm gonna talk about the second impact, which is about take-home assignments and portfolio projects. Now, with take-home assignments, there'll be less focus on UI and more focus on creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. And this is because when you're work creating, when you're doing an assignment, it's so easy to quickly ask Figma to build a particular screen which looks good. And what you're going to be tested on is your creativity, is your critical thinking, and whether you are able to identify and solve the problem appropriately, right? Your UI design skills are not going to be given that much focus as these other things right now. And it's going to be assumed that you have a stronghold over your UI design principles because you can use Figma AI to build flows and present it during the interviews. But what people are going to look at is your problem solving skills and they're going to assume that you have a strong hold over your UI design principles. So they're not really going to be testing that because they don't know whether you are the one who designed it from scratch or you use Figma AI. And this is just a screenshot from the keynote and these screens, they actually look pretty decent even though this is in beta. The spacing is very well done. The typography is on point and you can see you've got, it's been able to do different types of layouts. Like the first screen, 
is with dark mode. It's got a proper focus state. It has proper CTAs, the typography, the nav bar, the tab bar. They look pretty good. This looks like a human actually did it. The second screen is also really great. It looks like a really minimal polished looking app. Of course, there are a few problems here and there. Some of the UI patterns, they don't make complete sense, but this still looks really clean and minimal, right? And what this means is that people who just push pixels are gonna be in deep trouble. If you're not thinking, if you're not doing a much better job than AI, you're gonna be in trouble because the beta results are actually pretty decent. And companies are now going to need a way to validate your skills, right? They will not be able to validate your UI design skills. The best they can do is probably invite you to the company and, and you know, sort of see you design screens, right? But if you presented your work with screens generated with Figma AI, that's all right. But they need a way to validate your entire skill, right? And so what that means is you now have to become a better articulator and a storyteller. This is what is going to separate you from the rest of the people because AI is not gonna do this for you. You have to do this all on your own. And if you're a good critical thinker, you're a good problem solver, you're a good observer, you will be able to articulate better. And what does articulation really mean here? It's about summing up a lot of information into a consumable quantity, right? And the reason I'm saying this is because long format case studies are getting outdated. Yes, it was a trend back before when I was becoming a designer or a couple of years back, but now long format case studies are filled all over the internet. They're not well written at all. Probably one in 200 case studies are even worth reading and nobody even has the time to sit and read all this because they are not articulated well. They are basically an information dump. It's just everything that you did, you dump that into a very long case study and nobody has the time to read it, right? And I wanna point out something over here. In one of the sessions, they showed this feature, I think it's gonna come soon, where they took a couple of sticky notes from FigJam and Figma AI was able to take those sticky notes and prepare a presentation around it. And what this made me realize is that now, when you wanna create this presentation in a short form, all you have to do is create a couple of sticky notes, talk about the prompt statement, talk about some of the things that you did, your insights, your solutions, and you take all of that and you let Figma AI prepare this presentation deck. And it's probably gonna do it pretty well. And of course, it's gonna make some mistakes and you might have to tweak things around, but it's gonna help you take all those things and articulate it in a very nice way. And that is how you are going to stand out. The better you articulate and talk about the problem statement and the solution and your process, the more you're going to stand out and get those brownie points, right? So I won't really wanted to point this out. And maybe when the feature is out, I probably will make a video on explaining how I would use this feature to prepare a presentation. And decks are now going to become the industry norm. It's already been the norm for a long time. That's why when you see most of the designers from really big companies and very senior designers, they have design decks and small case studies. They don't really have huge, huge case studies. So the industry is now going to start moving into this format where you will now have to start creating design decks instead of writing super long case studies. Now, another thing that I want to touch upon is landing pages. Now, this was a prompt, and this is obviously from the keynote, and this is a pretty good portfolio website. Now, of course, it has a few mistakes. If you see that the navigation link items seem to be pretty huge, they should be pretty small, but that's okay. And if you actually watch the keynote, you will realize that this output that AI generated was actually pretty amazing. And what this basically means is that no one is going to care how your portfolio website looks unless there is something really exceptional about it. So having a portfolio website is not gonna be a competitive edge anymore, right? You might as well use Notion or some other platform itself to present your work. At the end of the day, your work is what matters the most. Another thing that's gonna happen is whiteboarding rounds are now gonna become more important because this will be the true way of identifying your skill set. You're already going to enter the interview rounds with good screens that are going to be designed. Whether you know UI design or not, it won't matter because we will never know how to evaluate that. What we can evaluate is your problem solving skills, your ability to think, your ability to ask good questions, your ability to articulate. These are the things that people are going to start focusing on and whiteboarding rounds are going to be more important. And I've already spoken about this many times in the past, right? And I even have these two videos that I launched last year. And when I was taking a screenshot, I observed something very interesting. Both these videos, which is part one and part two, have the same amount of views. And this is very rare, 
to see, which is actually very good in my case, because it shows that people are taking this seriously and people are taking this seriously only because companies are demanding it and people are watching both the parts equally. And I want this behavior to grow and I want the industry to start focusing on problem solving skills rather than just execution. All right, moving on. The third impact is on content creators. And this includes me as well. Now, if you go to the internet and you search for tutorials about product design, these are the three main types of topics that you're gonna see, right? You're gonna get basic Figma tutorials. You're gonna get a lot of news reporting, which I don't really believe is content creation. And then you're also gonna have resource dumps, right? Which is basically, you know, top five fonts, top five resources, top five platforms, this, that, whatever, right? All of this is soon gonna become irrelevant and people are not gonna watch these things because these things are not gonna be helpful anymore. But the reason content creators do this is because this is what gets them views. This is what pushes them in the algorithm. This is what gets them more watch time. And this is typically the kind of content people wanna watch, right? And what you basically need to do is you need to go ahead and increase the expectations through constructive feedback. You need to tell these content creators, including myself, if you think my content is not good enough, suggest what you would like to watch. Suggest what sort of content you wanna make. What you need to do is stop appreciating content that adds no value. Their content needs to start having depth. Ask them to make content on topics and ask them to go in depth. Their content needs to force you to think critically. This is extremely important. If you're not critically thinking, if you're not questioning a lot after watching a video, that's not good for you. Because if you don't do this, you're the one who's gonna struggle in the very end. The reason there's so much nonsense on social media is because nobody is actually telling these content creators to put out get better content. Nobody is giving ideas. Nobody's telling what they're struggling with. And this doesn't have to be done in a very rude, disrespectful way. This has to be done through constructive criticism because that is when the content creator is going to want to take this seriously. And this applies to me as well, not just to other content creators. Now let's move to the next part, which is impact for to design school and online courses. Now, if you go to a design school, the one year, two year course will actually drastically slow down your career. It's going to slow it down so much if you go to design school today. And let me explain to you why. Design schools will only help you look at the world from a design standpoint. They're not going to teach you Figma. They're not going to teach you interaction design. They're not going to teach you what product designers actually do. They just help you look at the world from a design standpoint. And that's not what you need. And you don't need one to two years to do that. And they will never teach you how to do problem solving from a product design perspective. Of course, they will teach you problem solving and articulation and research and all of these things, right? But what sort of job are you going to do after you graduate, right? If you're gonna be a product designer, then a design school is not gonna teach you any of these things. A design school is going to prepare you for something that's totally different. And all the things that you have to learn to become a product designer, you have to learn that on your own. And that is happening even today. There is no design university in the world that prepares you to be a product designer. And AI is going to get smarter. So if you spend two years in design school, by the time you graduate, AI would have gotten so stronger and it's going to get faster as time progresses. And what will happen to you is you will eventually be left behind and the ship would have sailed because you spent two years in a bubble in design school and the world really moved on really fast and people jumped on the AI boat and then just sailed away. Now coming to online courses, the major problem with online courses is that their three to six month course is not enough to build critical thinking skills, right? This is a much better alternative to design schools. But these courses also have their drawbacks because this three to six month period will not really help you think like a product designer. It's not gonna teach you problem solving skills. It's, going to, it's not gonna teach you critical thinking skills. The main reason is because you're inclined to follow their structure and their pace of learning. If you probably spent three to six months just focusing on critical thinking and problem solving, then it's good. But most of these courses have a following structure and you're forced to sort of learn at the pace that they're teaching. It's pretty much like school, right? When you have an exam, you just study what is taught, you go back home and you learn what was taught that particular day. You never do things at your own pace. And if you did try to do things at your own pace, then why did you pay money to join this course, right? So you either follow their pace of learning or you do things on your own, right? So that's the biggest problem. And basic UI design skills can be learned for free online, right? You don't really need a super fancy course for that, right? 
before the dawn of design influencers and YouTubers and content creators in the design industry, everybody learned UI design skills for free. Nobody was selling these courses. Nobody was making money off of this. Nobody was commoditizing this, right? Everybody learned UI design for free. So now why is it that suddenly you need money to learn all this, right? And finally, number five is the effect on product companies. Now this is gonna be super short because typically designers and product companies are safe, right? They're already a lot better than AI. If you're working in a product company, there's a very high chance that you don't really have to fear. But there are some things to keep in mind. Very early stage startups may not need designers to design their MVP. And this is super early stage. And I see a lot of people who work in these super early stage startups. And this company has been around for probably one to two years or maybe even three years. They're still designing their product, right? To design their MVP, Figma AI is more than enough. And the engineers and product managers themselves can figure things out, right? The engineers are gonna look at the design. They're probably gonna figure out how it is. PMs, if they have some amount of design background or some design sense, PMs can do a pretty good job themselves. They don't really need great designers because they're designing an MVP and they want something simpler. Smaller startups, on the other hand, may need less designers. It's not that they will not need any designers. For example, if there's a startup that has two products, a consumer facing and internal tool, or maybe not even internal tool, a web app of that, right? The same designer, a single designer can quickly run a few prompts of Figma AI come up with a few initial designs, build a really quickly a design system and can do both mobile and web. So smaller startups may hire less designers because the PMs and engineers and all of these guys can work together and figure things out, right? You don't need so many designers to this. You don't need UI designer, UX designer, product designer, right? Just a very small team of designers is gonna be enough, which means the demand is gonna sort of drop at a company level. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna give you an example of what AI cannot do. And I'm gonna take an example of Swiggy, and this is something that I recently saw on social media. A lot of people were complaining about this, and when they were complaining, I started questioning a lot of things. So Swiggy came out with this screen, and if you see the bottom tab, you see this tab called as Reorder. It's pretty obvious why this feature exists, and you know, there's no rocket science about it, right? And I'm taking a very tiny, small example. And as you can see, it is the fifth tab out of the six tabs that are there. And when I saw this, I immediately started questioning. Now I thought about how did somebody decide that having a tab is the right solution to solve the problem, right? Now, obviously the problem they want to solve is they want, to, they want people to order faster, spend less time on the app thinking uh, because that might lead to more drop-offs. So it's a lot easier if people can just reorder. Maybe this came as a customer request Maybe they're doing an A-B test and I'm pretty sure they're running this as an A-B test because I don't think they would launch a feature directly like that, right? You're adding a tab that's a very serious, uh, you know, design decision or a product decision, right? So they just won't do it lightly. They will obviously probably testing it um, and maybe they ran a beta test with a couple of users much before. I don't know, right? But the question is, why did somebody decide that this has to be a tab? And what should be the tab's position? Should it be one, two, three, four, five, six? Why is it the fifth tab, right? Will people even look at that? I don't know. And why are there no entry points, right? Why didn't they have an entry point on this home screen and decide to have it on the bottom tab, right? Now, here's the thing. An AI will never be able to answer these questions and an AI will never generate a design with six tabs because the AI has been told by online sources, by the guidelines everywhere that a, that a phone cannot have more than five tabs. So an AI is never going to think out of the box, is never going to be creative, is never going to challenge the status quo and suggest a design that looks like this. And this is something only a smart human being or basically a smart product designer can do. Now, of course, I don't work at Swiggy. I don't know how these decisions were made. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. I have no clue, right? But these are the questions that popped into my head. Now, when you go to this reorder tab, you see this particular screen, right? And here are two of my recent orders. And this is how the flow looks like when you're trying to add something. You can tap on the plus buttons um, and you, know, you can go ahead and add your order, right? Now, when I looked at this screen, now generating a screen like this, maybe it's sort of easy for Figma AI to do it, right? Maybe it's going to generate a screen like this, but there's a lot more to think about. Now, first of all, what should be the screen layout, right? How should the screen look? What if I have 30 different orders? How is that screen going to look? Is this the best way to have a screen layout? How many items are, going to, are they going to show? 
should they show restaurants too because right now they're just showing basically only the last orders right what if i want to have restaurants also maybe that decision makes sense maybe that doesn't is that that's a question you want to ask what are the various data points to show here right for example for bowl company you can see that with the price they've mentioned the original price as well why was that important to be shown maybe there's a reason for it we don't know what if there are a lot more data points that you want to add what if there are multiple orders from the same restaurant maybe i did five different orders from bowl company or uru brew park right how is that going to look what is going to be a much sensible design and if you look at the interaction over here it didn't allow me to order all the three items in one shot it forced me to select each of the items and place an order again now so maybe this makes sense maybe this doesn't make sense what if i had ordered only one item now maybe this design makes a lot more sense than the other options but who decides what the interaction should be so ai is never going to be able to answer these questions and only a really smart product designer is going to ask these questions is going to do tons of iterations is going to validate is going to know what is good design and what is bad design is know how to go into test it it's going to know how to take the output of ai design and change it to meet the needs of the company that's what people are going to start looking at constructing the screen is no rocket science but how to do it is what product designers are really required to do but how the screen should look and work is something product designers are going to be needed for i'm going to give you another example so very recently i was filing my income tax return and my ca does this for me and he spent 2 hours filling up all the information and he texted me saying that hey i filled up all the information have a look i'll file it now when i opened up the income tax website and i landed this is the main thing that i see now as you can see over here there are two cts and i've actually hidden the labels and i want you people to take the next 15 seconds to think about what should these cts be right so pause the video look at the screen and tell and think about what the cta should be all right now i'm going to reveal to you what it is this is what it is it is file now and resume filing now the moment i opened up the website i actually wanted to click on file now but before doing that i saw this note that said in case file now is selected the existing saved draft will get overridden if any now what this basically means is if you click on file now you're going to delete the existing draft and you're going to start from scratch this freaked me out because i was about to press on this all right how is the secondary cta resume filing the primary cta should be resume filing and the secondary cta should be create new right now to iterate on all the things that i have said before the entire redesign of the income tax website was done by a design team in infosys and infosys as we know is a service based company and they probably have some design department or some sort of design team that's going to do this now who really approved this design who thought that it was okay to have file now as a primary cta this is going to create a lot of problems my ca just spent 2 hours trying to fill up the form and now i clicked on file now by mistake and everything is lost right why can't we just have resume as the primary cta right now the point i'm trying to make here is that people can say oh figma's ai is not that good but even people who are shipping real products are not that good and if ai gets better and ai is going to get better and much faster it's going to make life hard for all the junior designers out there who are trying to upskill or grow in their career so one of the biggest point i want to make is that this phrase that says fake it until you make it you can't do that anymore you can't fake things anymore at all right you might have gotten through your career with a little bit of luck now and then here and there because maybe your ui design skills were a little bit better than others but that sort of ends now and you will now be put in a spot and forced to become a much better designer and upskill you really have to grow your arsenal right now you need to have multiple skills because ai is going to pressurize everybody to upskill right now and so i want to talk about the three main skills that you need to start focusing on the first one is creativity now creativity is natural for some people and some people get creativity by practicing a lot and i definitely have no natural talent of creativity all my creativity has been years and years and years of practice even before i became a product designer right my eye for design my intuition my attention to detail all of this has come with years of practice right so the only way to be get creative 
is to start practicing. And the question you need to ask yourself is, can you be thousand times more creative than Figma AI, right? It's not about being a little bit better. You gotta be a lot better because not only will you beat Figma AI, you're gonna beat a lot of other designers who are competing for the same job, right? This is what is going to make you stand out. The second skill is about critical thinking. What you need to do is you need to start surrounding yourself with really smart people. Just the way you filter your Instagram feed, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, and you don't really try to consume content that is not adding any value, make sure the people you surround yourself with are also very smart people. Talk to them, understand their perspective, learn from them. This is the only way you're gonna start thinking. And don't be fooled by all the social media nonsense. Any piece of content you see, question that. Is this actually valuable? How is this going to help me? How much of an impact will this make to my skills or my career? Question these things and don't be fooled by all the social media nonsense. You have to become a better observer and a problem identifier. This is basically how you become a better critical thinker. You need to observe better and you need to identify problems better. And one of the ways that I suggest people to do is to start experiencing life more. Now, of course, this is not really you know, something related to design. This is just general life advice, right? But the more you experience life, right? It could be something as simple as applying for visa for, you know, a trip that you're doing, organizing a solo trip. It could be anything. Start experiencing life more because then life is going to put you in situations where you are forced to think. And eventually you will start asking more questions, right? One of the most important things to understand is that answers exist, but questions don't. All the content that's put online on social media or on the internet is basically because of the questions people have gotten, right? So if you ask more questions and if you ask better questions, you're going to get better answers and better content, right? The answers have always existed. Questions don't. So you need to ask those questions. I'm going to take a small example over here. So I don't know how many of you know this person, but he, for, the, for, for a long period of time, he has been putting out these posts where he takes a simple problem, right? Some of these are really funny and these are just concepts. These might not be scalable, right? But you can see how he's thinking like a proper problem identifier and observer and problem solver, right? So the first one is about um, having uh, AI summarize your long voice notes, right? That's a super helpful feature, right? Now, it's so easy for Apple to do this, but he actually just thought about it and it probably took him 10 to 15 minutes, but he's training his brain to think like that. The second one, an iOS option to set an alarm and wake me up at all costs. Now, this is obviously a little bit of a funny example, right? Where it says, we'll disable the snooze button and a text a new person for every minute you sleep in, right? Now, of course, the solution is a little funky and this is, he's just playing around, right? But it's a really good problem that he's identified and he's come up with some sort of solution. Obviously, if he actually put in the time and effort, he would definitely be able to come up with a really good solution. But you can see his problem solving skills, right? And Google Maps option to see how safe your current location is. This is a super great example, right? This is definitely that a lot of people want to know, especially women, they would want to know this information, right? When you go to an unknown locality, when you go to a new country, when you're traveling to a new country, you're on sightseeing, you're on vacation, this information is super helpful, right? And it's a simple problem that every human being faces and I'm sure everybody has thought about it, right? But is that at the back of your mind? Do you know what to do with that information, right? So when you're a better observer, you become a better problem identifier, right? So this is how you develop critical thinking skills. And finally, it's all about articulation, right? And articulation can only come with strong feedback and practice. This is the only way to do it, right? So you connect with smart people, you get their feedback and you practice, you fail and you practice, right? This is the only way to become better at articulation. It takes a lot of feedback and practice. And a lot of this can be implemented while you're working in the company itself, right? Try to get feedback from your senior managers, your design leads, your stakeholders, and ask them to help you itself. It doesn't have to come from design. This is basically a communication skill and this is a human skill, right? So anybody who you are talking to, who you are explaining something to, who you are trying to sell something to, take their feedback and practice. Now, the final part of the video, where I'm gonna talk about the future of Figma AI. Now, what we saw in the keynote was this basically this one prompt where the output was an individual screen. Make a form with filters for a recipe app. 
The output that it gave was pretty decent, no problems with it. But what is it that Figma can start doing? And I'm pretty sure they're probably gonna announce a couple more things you can do with AI at Config 2025. And these are my predictions, right? Now, instead of an individual screen, you can also create individual screens with custom design system components. And this was actually mentioned in the keynote where they said that they actually want to reach there. They want you to feed design system components to the AI and AI is going to use your design system components and build a screen out of it, right? So which means an engineer or probably a product manager with basic Figma skills will be able to build the entire app from scratch and they will never even need a designer. And this is pretty scary for people who don't focus completely on all product design skills. Another example is it can maybe start generating user flows. So if you say make a user flow for a movie ticket booking experience, maybe it's going to put out five to six screens and all you have to do is clean it up, make sure the copy makes sense, make sure the flow makes sense and everything. AI has done 80% of the job for you, right? It can also polish screens. Maybe you can say, take the screen and improve the typography, right? Which means that people can just explore ideas. They can produce faster. They can ship faster, right? And this is just execution work. So if your job is to take wireframes and to make them look pretty, AI is going to do that for you. It can even take a bad designer's work and make that better, right? So if you are not producing screens that are as good as what Figma AI generates, then you're in trouble. Here's another one. Make 10 different versions of this card component, right? Maybe you give it five, six data points and you say, can you make 10 different versions of this? And then you take each of those versions, you see if it makes sense, you put it in your screens, you maybe do some testing and you're sorted, right? Another one, follow specific instructions, right? For example, you can say, emphasize the top section of the screen, right? Maybe you have, a chart, maybe you have a carousel, maybe you have some information, I don't know, whatever it is, right? And if you're doing this basic execution type work as a product designer or basically a UI designer, AI yeah, can do this. And finally, the last one, it can probably maybe even solve small problems. So maybe you give it a screen and you say, hey, can you suggest ideas to increase the CTR on this screen? Maybe it's going to do a good job, maybe it doesn't, right? And I don't think this is gonna come, you know, anytime within two years, right? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But AI is very much capable of doing this, right? So if you're solving very basic problems, you're not really focusing on problem solving. You're able to do something that a product manager or an engineer can also do, then you're gonna be in deep trouble. And I wanna end this video by basically saying that now everybody is going to start at the same place and how you take this opportunity to upskill, to become much better than Figma AI will give you the chance to completely change your career trajectory. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.